I was going to solve this by substitution. What I want to make sure I do is I need to have a variable solved by itself. So I need to get x equals or y equals. Because then what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute the value of one of those variables into the other equation. So I need to solve for x or y. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if I look at these first two, solving for x and y in the top equation, it's going to be about the same. However, what I'm going to notice is to solve for x, I have to subtract the 5y, and then I have to divide by 2. Therefore, I'm going to be left with a fraction because I'm going to have a negative 5 divided by 2. It's going to get a little messy. Um, to solve for y, I have to subtract the 2x and then divide by 5. Again, that's each way it's going to be two steps, and I'm going to be left with fractions, which is still going to work. I probably just don't want to do all the math right now. However, if I look at this equation, it's really easy for me to solve for x. All I have to do is add the 3y to the other side, since 1 is my coefficient for x. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's just add the 3y to the other side. Therefore, I'm left with x is going to equal a negative 3 plus 3y. All right? Let's have a seat over here. So therefore, I have x equals negative 3 plus 3y. All right? Um, what I'm going to do is, is this value, I can now say that x equals negative 3 plus 3y. So rather than writing x up there, I can write in the value of what x is from my second equation, which is x equals negative 3, or which is negative 3 plus 3y. So I'm going to write 2 times, instead of x, I'll write what the value of my x is from the other equation. Does everybody see what I did? I solved for a variable on one equation, and I substituted that into the other equation. Now, I have to use distributive property. Could you tell them to hold on, please? No. Just hold on for a second. Therefore, then I distribute. I have negative 6 plus 6y plus 10y equals 38. Combine my like terms, I have negative 6 plus 16y equals 38. Um, now I add 6 to both sides. And I get 16y equals 44. Where did you get the, you get the 10? Yeah, where did know. you get the 10y? I don't know. I think I kind of made that up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what I did was I think I just did that. Hey, it's, there you go. It's 5. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like to make things up. Let's go with this. Let's add them up. Because obviously that didn't work out through decimal. Um, this is going to give us, was that 44? Yeah, yeah. This is 44. Okay. So when I add my 6 to this side, I get 11y equals 44. Right? Thank you. Divide by 11. Y is going to equal 4. Does so everybody see that? Yep. Now I know what my value of y is. I can plug that back into my equation to find the value of x. And it's important, you can plug your y into either one of these, but once you plug y into one of these equations, you then have to solve for x again, Rosalind. So the best thing to do is to take that value of y and plug it back into the equation when it's already solved for x. So now I can say x equals a negative 3 plus 3 times my value of y, which is 4. So therefore, x equals 9. So to remember, a substitution is telling us where our two systems intersect, what point they share. And since they share exactly one point, I can write it as a coordinate point, which is 9 times 4. All right, that's it. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve the systems of equations using elimination. So to do that, what I need to do is um, identify which variable I want to isolate, right? Which variable I want to want to solve for that I can plug into the other equation. So to do that, I want to choose the variable that is isolated, right? That is by itself. Um, not really by itself. And you can notice that both these equations, I do not have a variable that is isolated. So that's going to be an issue. Um, the next thing is you want to say, all right, well, if there's not a variable that's isolated, look for the variable that has a coefficient of 1. Where you can see I have y and y. This is negative 1. That's positive 1, right? Well, preferably, we'd like to use the one that's positive. You could use this one. But since we have a, the variable with the positive one, let's go ahead and use that. So what I'm going to want to do is solve for y in this equation. So I have y, um, sorry, y minus 7x equals negative 6. So I want to isolate this variable. I want to get the variable un by itself. So to do that, I have to undo subtraction, which would be adding 7x to both sides. So I have y equals 7x minus 6.
OK. So now I'm going to take the value of 7, take the value of 7, and plug it into, uh, take the value of, sorry, the value of 7. Take the value of y, which is 7x minus 6, and plug it in for y in the other equation. So therefore, I have 7x minus, rather than y, y is equal to 7x minus 6. So I can, these are interchangeable, right? So that's 7x minus 6 equals 6. You could also write y, but again, we want to write an equation which only has x's so we can solve. Well, I need to make sure I apply distributive property. So I have 7x minus 7x plus 6 equals 6. Well, that goes to 0. And I'm left with 6 equals 6, which is always going to be true. So therefore, we have a consistent solution that is dependent. This is infinite many solutions. If you looked at the graph, these would be, graph, um, these would be lines that are right on top of each other. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve a system of equations using substitution. Thanks. If you guys look at this equation, this one's a little bit different. So there's something special about that last one because we had a variable that had a coefficient of 1, right? And we liked that, Brianna, because it had a coefficient of 1, it was easy to solve for that variable. However, and when you have a case like this, we don't have a variable that has a coefficient of 1. If you still like substitution, you can still apply substitution, Jordan, but it becomes a little bit more difficult. That's why we like to look at using elimination, which we looked at. So when applying elimination, basically what we're doing, rather than solving for one variable and plugging what that um, expression is into the other equation, basically what we're doing is we're adding it or subtracting the two equations. So to add or subtract, it only makes sense to add or subtract the equations is when you have the, variable, the equations with um, coefficients that are exactly the same. So I look at, make sure my variables are aligned, which they are. Then I look at the coefficients of the variables to see if they're the same. Well, the coefficients of x's aren't the same, nor are the coefficients of the y the same. All right. So I need to say, all right, well, which one does it matter which one is going to have the smaller coefficient or the least common multiple? Well, six, forget about the negatives. Three and six have a least common multiple of six, and two and four have a least common multiple of four. So any, either way, to get them to be the same, all I need to do is multiply my top equation by 2. So I'm going to do that. So I multiply the top equation by 2. And when I do that, I obtain 6x minus 4y equals 10. And then my bottom equation is going to remain the same, negative 6x plus 4y equals 7. Now usually, when we're doing elimination, we're only eliminating one variable at a time. But as you guys notice, when I multiply this, now both of my variables have coefficients that are exactly the same. Do you guys see that? And since the coefficient is 1's positive, 1's negative, should I add the equations or subtract the equations to eliminate, to get to 0? I should just add them. So you wanted us to do add a negative if you want to do it. Well, see, you can multiply by, like if these were both positive, I would say multiply this by negative 2, because then that would be negative 6, positive 6. But you already have a negative 6, so make 1 positive, 1 negative, and that's fine. Now let's go ahead and add them. 6x plus negative 6x is 0x. Negative 4y plus positive 4y is 0y equals 17. 0x plus 0y is 0 equals 17. So I look at that, and I determine, all right, this system of equations is it has a false statement. It doesn't tell me what x is equal to or what y is equal to. It gives me a false statement. Since they give me a false statement, Quijan, this is um, a no solution. There is never going to be an intersection that is going to be true for either of these equations. So therefore, it's no solution 